When you're working with new clients and they're like trying to figure out what to buy, what is it, what's the conversation you have with them? 80% of your time on the boat is spent at anchor. When you're sitting at anchor, do you want the space and the, uh, and the, and the luxury of it? Or do you want the cramped spaces, but you can get from point A to point B really, really fast? And for most people, buying catamaran, they're island hopping, right? Like Correct. You're hopping from one island to another. And so what we try to strive for is we want to hit the middle of the road. Okay. We don't want to be the slow, but we know we're not the performance. So we shoot for that middle of the line that we feel... The boat does perform very well, averaging anywhere from seven to, we've had them up to 12 plus knots. We've seen 15 on ours, so and <laughs> that was a little scary. But. Having the interior <laughs> space though, to where when you're sitting on anchor for that 80%, yeah. you can enjoy the space in all the different areas of the boat to where you're not feeling cramped together. All right, I'm here with Colby on the Leopard 50, and you're walking around this boat looking at it, and yeah. obviously the luxury, luxurious part of it, right? Yeah. But when you're looking at boats, are you looking at cruising for luxury, or are you, luxury, or are you looking at performance? I'm got a little tongue twisted yeah, there. Yeah, I know you know you're good. I'm I'm trying. We're trying to strike the balance. Okay. So there there feels it feels like there's maybe three or four all manufacturers that are all in the solid cruising category. Sure. Um, and but there's also a number of manufacturers that are also building not quite race boats, but definitely are on, are trying to they're trying to cross the line. Now, they are. Right? They're, the so industry is like, seeing that like come together a completely. little bit. Maybe. So so the Venn diagram is starting to overlap a little it bit is. more, right? Yep. And and so we're going to buy our first boat next year. Okay. Um, and we're looking in the 45, 46 range. Sure. But I've already got the spreadsheet built for the specs, the Bruce numbers, the uh, power to weight ratios. And well, I'm using that to compare. So it's not just about how many beds, because we are probably going to put it in a charter. Okay. But we're also wanting to think about, you know, what is the life of that boat going to look like that we're sailing on it after the charter? And so we definitely sure. want a blend. Okay. And as far as price goes, I think where a lot of people are getting lost is the difference in the, the hike price. Or it's so much more expensive to get that blend in some areas, right? It is. So, so, so you start slapping a bunch of carbon on the boat. And yeah, it gets lighter, it gets faster, but the price goes up tremendously. Yeah. 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 So, so you really have to figure out like, what do you want? Do you want the the the, the couch on a catamaran? I'm sorry, the or the condominium yeah. on a catamaran, or do you want something that might be able to get you out of trouble? bad weather yep. or maybe even just be able to sail in more conditions right and i so, think that's really where, where folks are really trying to hit the sweet spot absolutely well thank you so much for your input yeah, as yeah. a as a buyer you're looking to buy next year and yeah. i wish you all the best i hope uh, you I, keep I up with your, us i enjoy your channel you guys keep doing it thank and you're you smiling so much. too so keep it up. <laughs>so I'm here with my brother from another mother, Wiley. <laughs> and the beard, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wiley's always working with clients to find them a catamaran from all different brands, right? You're really representing the client's best needs, not specifically pushing one particular brand. Correct. Clients come to you asking about, they're not sure whether they're going the cruising or the performance brand or route. What are the conversations you have with them? So a lot of times, like what I'll, what I'll bring up is, you know, it'll usually be the husband wants performance, the wife wants comfort. That's pretty much always <laughs> the case, always the <laughs> case right? It makes sense. And so, you know, the first thing I'll always ask is, all right, if you're gonna drive from California to Florida, would you rather do it in a like a Cadillac Escalade? Oh man! Or like a Porsche 911? That's that's a great question. I would rather do it in a 911, but I know my wife wouldn't want to go with me in a 911, <laughs> which means we would have to do it in like an Escalade. So usually I kind of bring it back to cars because when you bring up automotive terms, totally makes it, sense. People can really relate to that. Yeah. So it's like, what is going to be more comfortable? When the rubber hits the road, are we going performance or are we going cruising? I'm going cruising. All right. Yeah. <laughs>
This boat skews all the way to the far other side of the spectrum. Every single decision about this boat was made about weight in mind, uh, with the goal of it being ultimately the fastest, in, especially in light air, cruising catamaran ever built. We are here on the HH66 at the Annapolis Sailboat Show, and I'm here with Seth, the president of HH Catamarans, and you have such an interesting background. You grew up racing monohulls, correct? Yep. And then took your family on a lagoon on a three-year sabbatical before moving on to an ultramare. So you have kind of done a little bit of everything on the cruising side, performance side, and then now working with HH. Tell us a little bit about, I guess, how you guys are bridging the gap between cruising and performance. Yeah, this boat's heavily skewed towards performance, but we really do build custom boats. So especially this size, you know, we, we typically build cruising catamarans. Um, that's really our forefront, our, our where the company sits uh, in terms of its ethos. So we build from 44 feet all the way up to 88 feet, but our 44, our 50, 52, these boats are, are meant for a cruising couple like you guys to sail. Sure. And you know, they're really designed with, with blue water, open ocean sailing in mind. So it's not about racing and, and winning regattas like this boat might be, but really it's about you know, creating a, a you know, comfortable living space uh, that you can live on. It's a safe blue water boat. You know, they're built with the, the top quality materials. Price tag, what kind yeah. of price tags are we looking at from the smallest to the biggest in the line? Well, it's a good question. And, and getting back to the earlier point about you know, comparing these two different types of boats, you, they are, performance cats are more expensive. Okay. So you know, any boat where you're gonna have you know, epoxy resin instead of polyester or carbon fiber instead of mm -hmm. fiberglass, now you're getting a stronger, lighter boat, but it sure. is more expensive. So our HH44 would start like fully loaded sails, electric drive, solar batteries, you name it, water maker. You're probably looking at like 1.35 million US, okay. brand new. And then you know, to jump to our 52, you're about 1.8 million. Um, and then you know, it kind of goes up from there to you know, upwards of 15. The boat we're sitting on. Let's ask that. Uh, this boat, um, new today. Nemo? Nemo, new today, with the boards and the rig and all the custom work that this boat did, would be probably be in like the seven, seven, eight million dollars. Incredible. So, who would buy this? Like, like, what kind of yeah. person? What are they wanting to achieve? Where are they going? Like, who is the perfect customer to buy this boat? Yeah. This boat skews heavily towards racing. So somebody okay. that wants to, you know, go, I mean, you, as you can see, you can cruise on this boat. Sure. So it's a boat that would really be, you know, someone that wants to race in all the top regattas, go down to Lavoie, go down to BVI Race Week, and try to trophy in those regattas, but then maybe also cruise afterward with their family. So. Okay, and then one last question, cruising versus performance and why? It really depends on your needs. Like if you are if you live in Florida and you're gonna go to the Bahamas exclusively, then buy you can buy a cruise, like a, a, like a charter boat. Sure. Uh, you can buy a Leopard or a Lagoon. You know, that's a perfect boat for that need. Uh, but if, in my opinion, if you're gonna be crossing oceans and you're gonna be sailing upwind significantly, because it's not always downwind, uh, and you want to sail and you don't want a motor, uh, then you really are going to be stepping into a performance catamaran, maybe something with dagger boards. Um, there's lots of brands out there that will do that. Uh, but, you know, that's this type of boat is really for someone that enjoys sailing, likes to turn the motors mm -hmm. off, doesn't want to spend a fortune on diesel sure. and, in, and uh, is in a true sailing boat. On this journey to find out the answer between cruising and performance, we have now toured a few different boats, which brought us over to Balanced Catamarans. So we have Phil, the owner of Balanced Catamarans here with us. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that exact question, cruising versus performance, and what balance has brought to the market and trying to bridge that gap, right? Yep, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So actually the name Balanced Catamarans, I was a yacht broker for most of my life. Okay. I sold about 1,200 used catamarans. And I was out on a sea trial of a charter cat off sure. of Palm Beach in 18 knots of wind. And I'm going to windward and I could only go to windward at about 58 degrees. And I couldn't get the boat to go more than seven and a half knots. Okay. And when I was coming back into Palm Beach Harbor, I said, we've lost the balance in my head. And then I said, I'm gonna, start a company that builds a balanced catamaran. A catamaran that's great for cruising, but it's also performance oriented. Sure. Made that decision in 2012. 
uh, led to the first design of this boat, the 526. Okay. Um, first boat was launched in 2015, and ever since, that the company has just uh, grown and grown. That's amazing. So when we speak of balance and what you're referring to, we're talking about the performance versus the luxuries of what we find in a cruising catamaran, right? Like you want a, a comfortable, balanced boat, and so that's where you came up with the name balance. Yeah, remember, there's no such thing as a perfect balance because everybody has to define what that balance is. For themselves, sure. Correct. So like with our boats, we have some people that skew more towards the performance side, the more racy side, and we have others that skew more towards the cruising side. My guess is it's a husband and wife and you're trying to you're trying to balance in between. Is that is that? Well, I mean, a, a little bit. Yeah. The husbands always want to go faster, yeah. right? At least that's yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, Emily behind the camera right now wants to be comfortable, and you yeah. know, I do too. But I would love to. I come from a power boating background. Yeah. And had never sailed before ever buying our boat. I mentioned right. that to you a little while ago. Yeah. And uh, every once in a while, I'm always let's go a little bit faster, a little bit faster, but. Yeah. At the same time, I love the comforts that our yeah. boat provides for us at anchor, right. which is spending 80% of our time at anchor. So it comes down to one of the biggest questions that everyone's asking or wants to know, price tag. What are we looking at for a 52 foot balance? They're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this boat uh, takes 35 to 40,000 labor hours to build. Okay. Um, it's all epoxy construction, heavily carbon reinforced, all handmade, all hand fared. So this boat, base price is 1.7 million. Fully equipped, it's gonna be around $2.2 million. Performance boat or cruising boat and why? You want a performance cruising boat is what you want, ideally. So you're saying you want a balance you, between the two. Well, I mean, that's why I designed the boat. That's what, <laughs> but again, that's what I believe in. Sure. Okay, I want to go cruising with my wife and my family, but I also want a boat that's fun to sail, that can point to windward, that can make fast passages on, and that's got storage, Payload capacity, you can you have to put all your toys on the boat. Yeah. So the boat absolutely. has to have the payload capacity to bring your dive tanks and your paddle boards and all your stuff, stow all your gear. That's essential for cruising. It is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. Yeah, we've all appreciated right. it. Guys, I hope this video helps shed some light on the cruising versus the performance and or in between. And at the end of the day, what it really comes down to and what I've learned in filming this video is it really depends on what you are looking to do, where you're looking to go in your sailing experience, and exactly how much time you expect to be crossing oceans or sitting at anchor. We greatly appreciate you watching all of our videos, and unfortunately, we were not able to bring all of them to you to, at, here at the show. We bit off a little bit more than we can chew, but we are thankful that you're watching this one, and we hope that you will continue watching all of our videos to come.